go hunt and today i'm going to do a geared up video on my gear that i'm taking to utah for a general season uh, rifle deer hunt i'm really excited leaving tomorrow both my dad and i have a tag we're going to central utah um, it took a few years to get the tag i used go hunt insider to do my research and basically use the draw system to find the best tag that we can get um, because we want to hunt deer this year and so we got the tag my boy my son spencer he's coming he's 10 years old he's been on a couple other hunts with us he's been on shed hunts a lot of good hiking trips so he's excited and hopefully we can get an animal down so he can be a part of that whole process so jumping in i'm going to talk about my clothes worn first um, and to give some context um, the temperatures are going to be anywhere from mid 20s to uh, low 70s, so not that bad. There's no moisture predicted, no snow coming at this time. It's a five day hunt, so I'm gonna have gear to stay warm and also be in somewhat warm weather um, as it, it'll heat up on us. So talking about the lineup, we have the King's Elevation Quarter Zip T. This is a really nice uh, polyester blend top. Uh, I used this in Arizona last month for my elk hunt and it was extremely humid, hot, it was like high 80s, and just sweated in this thing for multiple days. And it, it really kept me, uh, it kept me feeling good. It would, it would keep me cool. It never it has like the polygene treatment, so it's not supposed to smell um, as you sweat, and it did a good job. So this would be my main piece. It's gonna keep, keep me protected on the arms and uh, keep me kind of self-regulated with the temperatures. I will have this Merino 150 foundation uh, quarter zip tee from Kings. Uh, I use this on the uh, my deer hunts this year. Really good for those early mornings when you're still active hiking and uh, you need something to just still kind of keep that cold edge off. This piece I haven't used yet. This is the 260 foundation quarter zip tee from Kings. Uh, it's a 260 weight merino blend. Uh, has a pocket here on the front and also thumb holes. Um, on the cuffs. Uh, this will be used in those cold mornings. Not sure if I will need this uh, during the day, but this will be a, basically like a mid, -la mid layer. This is the Outdoor Research Vigor Full Zip. Love this top, um, adds a good amount of warmth. It's the waffle, waffle pattern design, um, helps keep that heat trapped in. And I don't know, I'm gonna test, like I said, I haven't, haven't used the, this one yet. I wanna put it to the test. I know I like, like this, especially when I need a hood, um, protect your neck and kind of the sides of your face from the sun. It works pretty well. For pants, I'm going with the King's Ridge Pant. Talked about these pants before. They're nice. This is gonna be a good, um, they were good in early season, but it'll be a good mid-season pant. It's durable and has good pocket arrangement, pockets on the sides, uh, and it's comfortable, I, li I like it. Um, I'm gonna be running with the Abisco Lights from Fall Raven, good pant. This is the main pant I used in Arizona, has side vents, you need that when you're hiking and it's really hot out. Uh, good, good pockets in the front. The pockets are a little bit shallow on the top, so I just keep my wallet in the front here, I keep my Zolio right here zipped up so nothing's gonna fall out. If I have keys to my vehicle, I'll keep them right here or in my backpack. But really one of my favorite pants, the Fall Raven Abisco Light. Uh, for rain gear, rain top as always, the Helium rain jacket from Outdoor Research. Again, this is just a little over six ounces, very basic, lightweight, uh, very packable rain gear. This is what just goes in my backpack even if I don't think I'm gonna need it. You never know. Things can happen pretty quick on the mountain and it's done well. There's no no pockets, no pit zips, just a very thin zipper uh, and a little pocket here, right here and uh, it works well. For the top, for my main uh, soft shell is gonna be the King's Boulder Jacket. I'll show you how this fits. It's a really comfortable piece. It has this uh, fleece on the inside and on the arms. It's, it's, it feels like it's uh, windstopper-ish. And um, it feels warmer than some of the uh, synthetic insulated jackets just because of how it's built. 
It feels like it's going to stop the wind and going to keep you warm on the mountain. So this next piece is a jack that I'm really excited about. I've been wanting to talk about this on a gear dump video for a long time. This is the Outdoor Research Helium hoodie. Helium rain hoodie? Right? Outdoor Research Helium hoodie is what it is. So what the rain part is, is this black part over the shoulders and hood is the same material. This Pertex Diamond Fuse uh, Pertex that's found in the helium jacket is right here. So a common issue you might find with a down jacket, if it rains and that down gets wet, you're not going to be warm. It's not going to keep its insulation. So with this, you're protected in those, those primary spots that when you do hit rain or some snow, or that snow accumulates or rain accumulates, it normally gets wet. But with this, you're going to be protected. So I've used this uh, already this season. I like it. I haven't hit any kind of rain or anything. But this is a lightweight option. It's 800 fill down. Really cool concept uh, that I definitely think you should, you should check out. Um, the colors we have in the gear shop is a uh, load in and a black and then just straight black. Uh, this is the pewter option that we, we don't carry, unfortunately. But um, really cool jacket. Um, it'll keep you warm. So that's the clothing setup. It's easy to bring too much clothes. And honestly, I always bring too much clothes. But we're going to be uh, basically truck camping. I do have the option to backpack in if needed. But uh, I'll have a couple options to change in and out of. And I'll have some options. So I like it. This is the Zoid Cube Bag from Mystery Ranch. A really cool way to organize your dirty clothes or your clean clothes. For me, I like to put in my, uh, my underwear and socks. So I'll go through some of that right now. Knowing that this is a cooler hunt, it's not the early season anymore, uh, I'm gonna be using the Hanwag Trek socks. Uh, I use these in the summertime, they were too hot. These should be good for an active mid-season mid hunt. The 2011 socks from Darn Tough. I also have the heavyweight version of the Damascus from Farm to Feet. I like those for the later season. I have some uh, Sax Quest underwear, um, the long and the regular. Those are good for out on the mountain. I got some regular socks in there too. You always want to have a fresh pair of socks for the drive home. You know, you've been out there just slaving away on the mountain. Come back in something fresh. For a blaze, so I have the Trail Blaze hat from Go Hunt newly updated redesigned it's pretty sweet this is i believe the waffle knit beanie the blaze option my boy is going to use this one and i'm going to use the traditional or the go hunt orange beanie love this beanie i, I couldn't relocate mine so i got a fresh one for today <clears throat> something we'll we are doing is testing a go hunt vest so i have uh, one of the best options here i'm going to take and and use out there in the field um, this is the beta option the one that actually hits production will be a little bit different, but it has some cool features that we're excited to share with you in the future. And that is my clothes worn. All right, so a cool duffel bag that I'm taking on this hunt is the Mystery Ranch Stuffle. Just want to show the functionality and features of this cool little bag. One, one thing I really like is just the zippers are all super smooth. It's a 60 liter duffel that folds into itself. Pretty sweet. So now I got a duffel bag. I'm gonna fill it up with these clothes and show you what it looks like when it's filled. Big old horseshoe opening. So I can easily organize it however I want. But in this case, I'm just gonna throw it in. It's pretty sweet. Um, I have kind of an extended po pocket down here at the bottom that I can uh, put more gear in. And I got handles on all four sides. So handles right here, handle right here, handle right here, and then also got the uh, shoulder straps. So I can do whatever I want with this duffel bag. I use this for a lot of my archery season hunts this year, and it was just nice to throw my stuff in, 
And then if I need to stuff all it down, put it nice and tight, I can. Uh, I mainly put it in that little pocket when I'm just storing it in the off season. But that's the stuffle. If you need a good duffel bag, good functionality, check this one out. All right, so for boots, I'm gonna be taking the Hanwag Macro Combis and the Hanwag Trapper Tops. So the reason why I'm taking two is I wanna have an insulated option if we need it. I kinda of don't think it'll be that cold, uh, but it might be. So this option offers around like equivalent to about 200 grams of insulation. Uh, these are good boots. I've used them in Wyoming a couple years ago in really cold conditions. I use them for shed hunting when it's really cold. Um, good boot. I like to lace it up almost to the top. I leave the, the top open so I can still get a lot of um, movement back and forth and not have restriction from it being too tight up high. Good boot. Macro combis are great. Use them for a long time. This is, uh, I think, my second pair. And I'm also using the tread labs inside. The insole inside has really good um, orthotic in there to help help you have good arch support and feel comfortable while hiking around. The terrain I'm going in is going to be steep in some areas, so I want to have a stiffer boot, and this will help in that. So that is my footwear. All right, now I'm going to be talking about my kill kit. This is the Seek Outside Possible's pouch, four liter. Comes in a four liter or a 1.5 liter. I just like the bigger option because it can hold my game bags and everything I need. Caribou Gear Hunter's Tarp. I'm going to pull this out just right quick, show you the size of it. This came in very handy on my Arizona hunt. Has a little guy out points if you need to, if it's windy, which a lot of times it can be windy and you're trying to take care of an animal, you got to put rocks on your tarp. You can put rocks on this, it's durable enough to take it. Uh, if you got dirt or mud, this is a great way to set it on the ground, throw your meat on it, even if it's in a game bag. Um, how we ended up using this, we had to put it underneath the back leg of the elk and use it while we were you know, taking that back leg off and used it later on during the rest of the hunt. Really good tarp, very, very functional, I like it. For game bags, I have an assortment a lot of my game bags from my elk hunt are still with the butcher. So what I have left um, is Argali, Caribou, and Mystery Ranch. So this is the Mystery Ranch. I did use this on the elk hunt just last month. Uh, cleaned it pretty good. Um, they performed really nice out there. It's really nice to have these, these handles on your game bags when you gotta lift them up. Uh, I believe this is the 80 liter, but I, I always forget. But that's the Mystery Ranch bag. I have a Caribou Gear uh, Muley bag, Muley size. This is basically the uh, the neck part or meat parts bag from Argali. It's more like the size I need for mule deer. And then I have uh, two of the elk ones from Argali left over. So um, these are a lot bigger. And honestly, um, it's good to have extra game bags when you're when you're out there in the field. So in my situation with Arizona, we killed, we uh, processed the meat, put them in game bags, and then we took them back to the truck, and then deboned everything, and then put them in a fresh set of game bags for the cooler. So during that process, the first round of game bags kind of get dirty. Um, you're cl still cleaning off the meat, and it was good to put them in a f totally fresh set there, um, in the f but basically at camp, and then put them in the cooler. And then when I got home, I could butcher and kind of further clean it up and put them in another set of game bags. So you can do it all with one set. All I'm saying is it's good to have extra options that are clean in case they get dirty. All right, for knives, I'm switching a couple things up. I'm going to be trying out the Randy Newberg EBS knife. This is super comfortable, uh, replaceable blade knife. It's, it's not too big. It's bigger than my Havilon bolt. I'll still have my Havilon bolt. Uh, in here, at least I thought I did. Um, as always, have my buck buck knife. Still runs like a champ. It was so sharp out there on Arizona's elk hunt. I loved it. <clears throat> I'm gonna be taking the uh, Leduc knife from Outdoor Edge. This thing's nice and small, fits in your hand good. We used this on our Colorado deer, both of them last year. Uh, my dad and I, he liked it, I liked it. And I like just kind of change it up. Tried a couple different knives. This is the Silky F 
100, I can't tell if it's 180 or 100 saw. It's kind of dirty still. It works like a charm. I'm going to get this in the gear shop eventually. Trust me. I'll get it ordered. <clears throat> I got some dude wipes. Uh, I got the Havilon blade remover. That'll be for the bolt, Havilon bolt. Got some paracord. Uh, I got some tape with a little bit of electrical tape and flagging tape. That was something I didn't think I had flagging tape in Arizona, but I actually did because I have it on this pen. Uh, the, the blood tracking job was not easy in Arizona. Um, and we fortunately found him one shot. Um, electrical tape. Still got my tourniquet in here. Just a basic tourniquet if I ever need that. And a different sharpener. I'm going to be trying the outdoor edge sharpener. Uh, I think it's called the, the X sharpener. Um, you can set it on something flat and sharpen. And I'm going to give that a shot this round. So that is the kill kit. All right, I'm going to go over optics next. For optics, we have, I'm using the marsupial bino harness. This is not the enclosed, it's the regular. Uh, I like it, it's nice and snappy, in and out. You can easily one-handedly open it and shut it. Rangefinder pouch on the side. I have the uh, radio pouch as well. And got a wind checker, Rocky Mountain wind checker on the side. Probably won't need that too much for deer unless we're really getting in close, but I'll have it if I need it. I do have elk call on the side. Probably won't be calling any elk, but if I need to stop a deer, I can use that. Um, I can put extra uh, bullets if I needed to in here, but I have a different bullet holder for that later I'll go over. For the actual optics, I have the Zeiss Victory SF 10x42s. Nice and clear. For the spotter, Zeiss Harbia. Gavia, I always get these mixed up the last little while. The Harpy is a uh, little upgrade. Gavia is a nice um, 30 power, 85 objective, um, 30 to 60 power, uh, 85 objective spotter. This thing's solid. I do a lot of phone scoping with it. I get a lot of good footage and it's nice. I have this the Suru 70A plate on the bottom. Nice, solid, long plate, a lot of contact. Uh, I really like the 70A. I also have a 70A on this Triclops, which I'll talk about in a second. I have a phone scope for my iPhone, and it's really nice because it fits right in the back of the bino harness. So I can always just have, have that right there. For the 15s, I got Leupold Santium 15 by 56s. Great bino. I just keep the, uh, the Stabilite here. Uh, like a stable light on the bottom. It's a simple strap that uh, you can leave on a tripod and you can put your binos on there, strap it. I just leave them right on there. So I just pull these out of my backpack, throw them on tripod and go. And uh, have another 78 plate. So I got three 78 plates right here. For the tripod, it's the Suru T1204 SK. This is a nice solid tripod and I have the triclops on here. This is basically a saddle for your rifle. So you can put your rifle on here. This is really good if you need to shoot up higher than what you can with the bipod. And if you are too high for backpacks to stack, if you got a lot of brush, um, or you're at a sitting position, or even st even a standing position. Um, I've used this to shoot a deer in Arizona a couple years ago at 240 yards full stand. And I could have done that free free handed um so this really gives you an option i'm going to just show you how pull it up here and just show you kind of the height you can get out of something depending on the tripod so if i needed to lean in i could lean in this way i can go even higher higher you go on a tripod the the more unstable it's going to be that's probably a little too high i would bring it down a little bit and uh, you can do a full 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 standing shot if needed if you're going to go long distance, longer than 300 yards, it's going to be more difficult, but uh, this definitely does give you that advantage to help you have something that's solid. Um, a lot of times you don't have anything but brush. You don't have a fence, you don't have anything. And then I will take a trekking pole and use that kind of on the backside, hold on to it like I would a tree or a fence post to give me that rear support. Because if you don't have anything, you're just free. So. Uh, I really like this. This is a really good setup for if I'm sitting somewhere overlooking a spot where deer might come in that I have a lot of brush, the Triclops is awesome. So that is my optics setup.
All right, this is my sleep system that I'm gonna be talking about next. Uh, for a sleeping bag, I'm using the Rab Mythic 600. This is a sweet bag, ultralight, it's 15.2 ounces, it's a 10 degree, 900 fill down, goose down, it's hydrophobic down, uh, means it's treated uh, to be hydrophobic if it gets wet. Really thin zippers, it's just ultra light uh, sleeping bag. I use this in the summertime, uh, more like a, a quilt because uh, it was too warm um, where I was at. Has a little pocket right up here, you can put a few things in there if you need to. Has a nice draft tube. The, the cool thing about Rab is their Chevron sh uh, baffles. So it's more of a, I'm trying to, sh trying to show you this. More of a Chevron, kind of like a V. It helps when you're moving around and things get shook, ar shook around. It helps keep that down more centered where you need that, uh, the warmth, whereas the tube, straight tube, sometimes all that down might just go to the side. Um, so it really helps, helps it be a little bit more, uh, more warm, more efficient. Uh, I like these bags quite a bit and uh, I'm excited to really put it to the test and put it in some cold temperatures. For sleeping pad, so I got a couple options for my sleeping pad. If I'm at the truck, I have the Climate Insulated Static V Lux SL, really long title, but it's basically just the little bit wider <clears throat> pad and high R value, it's six point something R value. Um, I really like it. My boy, my son's gonna be using, I have a climate, climb a loft in here. Um, it's a climb a loft inside here, which is a nice kind of wide pad. That's one he wants to use. Um, and if I do end up hiking out and away from the vehicle, I have my Thermarest x Lite. This is 12 ounces for the regular size. Use this a lot. It's good for lightweight hiking, backpacking. And then I have the Outdoor Research Stargazer Bivy. So slept in this a lot. I'm a Bivy guy. It, uh, I'm not that claustrophobic. And I will use this if I need to go camp on the mountain, if I'm trying to get on some animals that I need to make some further distance to get into. Uh, for pillows, I have a Sea to Summit Eros pillow and the Climate Lux pillow. Also have the Tioga, Western Mountaineering Tioga Silk Liner. It's just a nice liner to have. Um, keeps your bag nice and clean and it's comfortable to sleep in. For tent, I didn't bring the tent here, but it's the Marmot Tungsten three-person tent. We sell uh, Marmot tents now, not in the regular version, just had the ultralight version. My dad is also going to have the limestone. That's the six person marmot tent. Awesome tent. I do have it on order for 2023. So if you're looking for another six person size tent, uh, we'll have that in spring of 23. All right. So backpack is the mystery wrench sawtooth. It's good back. It's good bag. It's 2,700 cubic inches, a little bit over that. Really good day, day hunting pack. Uh, very comfortable frame. <clears throat> Used this for a couple years. Packed out two deer with it last year in Colorado with my dad. And I just like the functionality of it. Good uh, zipper system all the way down to the bottom. And uh, it's comfortable. Got a three liter bladder in there. I do also have a um, rain fly, the pack fly, Mr. Ranch pack fly for it. Got my little uh, Peaks Design camera holder right there on the, the hip belt. I do have a forager pocket on this side and uh, it's ready to go. Hopefully we'll be packing out two more deer this year. All right, I'm gonna talk about some miscellaneous gear now in my pack or around camp. So from this side, we have the Outdoor Research research Vigor Heavyweight Gloves. These are nice. Uh, they don't look like they'd be that warm, but they're double fleece. They do have that option to uh, use your phone. It has a, whatever they call it, the sensor technology to let you use your phone. They are warm. They have a grip, um, some grip there for you. Helps, uh, helps you use them better in the field. These will be my warm weather gloves. Then I'll have the Sika WS Windstopper gloves. WS Gunner gloves, I think they're called. Very comfortable. It's good to have a nice leather glove out there. For trekking poles, I'm sticking with the Lakey. These are the Microvario Carbons. These are from last year's model. Um, this is basically like a Z-pole design where they don't take up a lot of space and you can line them up and tighten them down and they're ready to go. 
foam grip, ergonomic grip. Um, they're my favorite. I love them. Z seat, this is a Thermarest Z seat. I'm the buyer for these at Go Hunt, and I promise you I have a thousand of these on order. They're struggling with supply chain. We're gonna get more. Um, I know these are in high demand. It's just a really very universal seat, universal seat that uh, you can use for glassing, standing on, when you're changing clothes. Uh, you can use it for a lot of stuff. We got more on order. Uh, we should have plenty of water at the truck, but sometimes you get hiking and you think, okay, two liters is going to be enough or three liters is going to be enough. It ends up being from morning to evening. You run out of water. I'm going to have my SteriPen. This is very easy to use. Yeah, fill up an algae with it, zap the water. It's good to go. I like going with SteriPen in the late mid-season time frame because if you have a water filter, you use it, it freezes, the uh, internal filtering system can be damaged and not be effective. So I go around that by using a steri pin. Uh, got a couple headlamps. I got the uh, Storm from Black Diamond. The latest ones I think are 450 lumen. This is a couple model old. Uh, it still does a great job. Black Diamond's awesome. Got the Crush Light from Goal Zero. A good little option for your tent or just throwing on the tailgate. Need a little extra light. Um, it's good. Zolio. Zolio Messenger, Satellite Messenger. It's simple. It's back and forth. You use an app on your phone. I like it. Have a little electric pump from Climate. Very strong. Uh, it's extra weight, but I'm truck camping, so I don't mind. This is something else that's pretty cool. It's the Climate um, Everlight Bar, Everglow. One of those two. Everglow light tube. So you can plug it into your power bank. And with this option, this is the bigger one. It gives you the option to have some light. You can blow this tube up. And then you can, this is really nice inside the camper shell of the truck along the outside or in the inside, just along the edge. It'll blow up and uh, give you light for cooking in there, sleeping, whatever you need. So these are pretty little sweet ad. Got the Stone Glacier Camp Pocket. I have toilet paper in there. I have an extra backup headlamp. It's a Black Diamond Spot, older version of it. And can keep a lot of other things. I'll probably throw in the dude wipes in there, just have extra wipes there. First aid kit will probably go in there. Always like to have the trauma pack with the quick clock gauze. Uh, for a cooking system, Jetboil Flash. I know I talk about this every time. It's just an awesome stove. It's fast. You don't got to wait for your water to boil very, very long, and it's reliable. Uh, Sea to Summit Spork, Alpha Long Spork. I have, this is literally my fourth one that's going to be going to Utah with me. I just like to have a bunch because it's easy to lose. This is Hard Side Hydration. This is really cool because you can just put this in your backpack and you can mix in your supplements. Um, so if you want to have some mountain ops or some warrior fuel or wilderness athlete mixed in so you have something to give you some caffeine or electrolytes on the side and your regular bladder, you can. If you want this to be your main bladder, you can. We sell 48 um, ounce Nalgene's. This is the 32. So I typically like to have a three liter bladder inside my backpack and maybe have that around two two and a half liters and then I'll have this liter full of supplements and I'll just use both however I want while I'm hiking. And I uh, got the Goal Zero Nomad 5. This is really really nice for your electronics, your your power banks. You can charge them while you're, you're out hunting. Just leave this in the direction of the sun. Keeps it going nice and strong. For uh, camera, I got Panasonic FC300. It's a good little camera with kind of a rigged up uh, microphone. I broke the last one and just going to really try to film the hunt with my, my son and my dad and just capture all the footage there. All right, something else I wanted to show what I'm taking for stove, an extra stove for when we want to like have steak or cook something more extravagant than freeze-dried food is Eureka Ignite Plus stove. Um, it's a two burner stove that um, it's pretty sweet setup. There's so many two stove options out there. And um, I have a Coleman 
and it just, the feet on it, anytime like I go to do the igniter, it moves. It's just kind of a pain. This one's a little bit more, uh, with the feet on there, it holds it in place when you, when you go do the igniter and stuff. Pretty simple setup. This is something I've kind of struggled with for in the gear shop. Like, is something like this, a two burner stove, something that a lot of us use on our truck camps, is that something we should carry in the gear shop? So I want to know from you guys, do you guys like something like this, something like a camp chef? What do you guys prefer to use when you're out there hunting? And what are some options you guys would like us to carry to consider? So uh, I've used this just a little bit at my house. It's super clean still. I'm going to put it to the test out there for truck camping and just use it. I'm sure it's going to be just fine. So just let us know in the comments below what kind of brands, what brands you'd like us to carry, what brands you'd like us to consider, and we will check it out. All right, so for the rifle, this is a Tungsten Pro Browning X-Bolt 6.5 Creedmoor. And uh, it's lightweight, it shoots good. I'm using reloaded ammo that I reload myself. Um, going with ELDX 143 grain bullet, shooting about 25, 74 feet per second. Um, it's grouping good and it's ready to go. This is the, am the new ammo wallet we got at Go Hunt. Uh, we designed this in-house with help of staff and Kevin, our head of private label. It's a pretty sweet setup. It's no Velcro. You're not gonna be, hopefully you don't have to be reloading in the field after you shoot, but uh, for like follow-up shots. But if you, if you do, you can easily take this, open it up and pull out the bullets you need. And uh, it's nice and bright orange. We have it in orange or olive. And um, got a couple of these going to my, my brother for his nephew's hunts. I got, one color for one caliber and the other color for the other so they can keep them organized. So that's a little tip. Uh, for the scope, I have a V6 Zeiss 18 power um, 44 objective and I uh, got a level on the, uh, the scope there. For the tripod, or not tripod, bipod, we have the Harris, I think it's six to nine, the S, so it swivels. And I have the Quake sling, nice and grippy, uh, Sling, I've been using that for a while now. I do have this other option here. Um, it's kind of a little, little bit of cheeker support and I can put extra bullets in here if I, on the side and a lot of times I'll keep extra uh, ear, ear plugs right inside here. So I try to have earplugs all over the place. I'm gonna have the option around the neck but it's just the worst. It's easy to like lose them while you're in the field and then when you need them, it's not fun to go like this and try to talk and use your hands and stuff. Uh, for rifle protection, I have the gun slicker from Go Hunt. So that's just a cool device that'll go over this, keep it protected. And then uh, we have scope slicker, just to show you how it, how it looks on this. I'm gonna let my dad use this one since I have the full gun slicker. This is made for something with a longer scope, but a uh, really easy way to protect your rifle, make sure the, len the lenses on either side aren't scratched, and then quickly you can bring it off. You can also make it so it stays on there. It has elastic on both these parts that can actually go underneath the bell and the front and it'll stay on there and you can lift it up and it's just gonna stay like that. So got a couple options there. I'm excited to use this. Got my first year with it last year. Uh, first year with this gun, uh, 150 yards, just really long range shot and, uh, and <laughs> it worked. All right, that was my gear list video for late season hunt, rifle. Hope everyone's having luck out in the field. Stay safe out there. Let us know if you have any questions down below and subscribe for good vibes and good luck this season.